Three link couplings are really nice looking, prototypical way to have your wagons and locomotives coupled together. But there are a few pitfalls you need to be aware of. Let's have a look. Right then, so recently, as we all know, or regular viewers of the channel will know, I switched to three link couplings, that is, hooks and three chain links. I moved away from the traditional awful tension lock couplings. I was never happy with those. I've never been happy with those. Um, I looked at KDs. KDs are very nice. KDs work very well, but they are quite expensive. And for UK outline models, they just don't. They still don't look right because they they're on the bogies and not in the right like, anyway. So I watched something better, something arguably more prototypical. Even though I'm not all about the prototypical of a model railway. I do like a proper coupling system that actually works. And so I got to thinking what I could use and I decided on three links. Now, yes, it is a bit more work in terms of uncoupling. You can't do it automatically, but then again, that doesn't happen in real life to begin with anyway. So it's a little bit pointless having, in my opinion, automatic uncoupling system on a model railway, which I can reach everything and I can operate it, no problem at all. So three links were the winner. However, there was one thing I did overlook. And that became very apparent to me when I was shunting the other day, just about to do the live stream, which got cancelled due to technical difficulties. So I looked a bit closer at why the wagons kept derailing when I was moving them from the fiddle yard to the layout. Now, I initially thought it was a track issue, but it was actually something else. And I'm going to show you what that is right now. Right, so here is two of the wagons I have recently converted to three link couplings or fine scale couplings, whatever you call them. And as you can see, hopefully you can see that there, you've got the hook in the middle there, sat between two buffers. And it worked, you know, really, really well. But the issue I was having is if you look at the, the original, if I can find the camera thing there, see there, look, you've got the, the hook, as it were, it's got quite a long shaft. So that is cutting down. And I thought to myself, well, to give myself a bit more space, I'll leave the shaft a little bit longer. And when I fit it to the wagon, it would protrude like this, beyond the buffers. That's how it would sit. So beyond the, uh, the buffer stops there. And it worked pretty well and it did it did its job and the, the three link coupling worked and it was very nice and jolly and blah, 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 because the hooks really are nice and fine so it's actually not that hard to get the chain links on there especially when you use a tool like this all that is is a little bit of brass wire which i've bent over at the end there and believe it or not the, the, the oh i've dropped it the handle is just a cotton bud with the ends cut off wrapped in gaffer tape but it works it just works so what was happening was because of my elongated shafts as the wagons were buffered together the hooks would actually as you can see there hooks are not touching but they were touching when they were longer and because they're hooks funnily enough they would actually hook together. But what essentially happened is the wagon would get lifted off the rails and trapped between the wagon in front and behind. So when it did eventually find the rail again, it would just derail, causing problems. So that was never made apparent to me. Of all the research I did about three link couplings, that never came up even once. If it's out there, please let me know. So this is what this video is about. If you are considering using three link couplings, save yourself a massive headache and do it like this. This is how I install three link couplings on all my rolling stock and I will be doing it this way going forward. I don't install the springs. Yes, I know you can do it and it, it makes it a lot easier when you set off, but I quite like the and all the slacks taken off. It's, it's silly, but I like it. So anyway, let's move swiftly onward and I will show you how I go about fitting a three-link coupling bar. Okay, so here we have a Helgen Class 17. This is the one I got back from Jen. Uh, 
absolutely love it and as you can see I've gone through the trouble of fitting the Acura scale Let's see if we can get this damn camera to focus oh my goodness me what's going on here I got the camera to focus that'd be lovely there we go so I've already fitted the Acura scale through link couplings and they work pretty well but the hook is just a little bit too small to be completely conducive to a nice smooth shunting operation so what I'm going to do is to each end I will fit the Slater's three link coupling hooks onto each end and I don't fit chains to them so what I'm going to try and do is remove the if I can the Instantler hook is that Instantler hook whatever it is and attach it to the little gap there. I may have to do some cutting and things, but hopefully you'll see what I mean, try and get it in there. And then I can hook my three link chains to it. I never fit chains to the locals. It's all the roller stock where the chains are located. So the locals always look nice, fresh and clean. So let's have a go, shall we? So you're going to need a few tools before you start this. I've got a good set of snips cutters. These are the DCC Concepts Track Cutters. Um, as long as you don't use them on anything, anything too hard, you're good to go. Because these are really sharp. And I've got some glue stuck on it. Look at that. Terrible. Anyway, good set of cutters and snips. Nice set of pliers. And glue and, you know, little pin vise. It's always good with a nice, a pair of BFCs, big fucking cutters. And you'll see why in a minute. So the first thing I'm going to try and do is just remove, if I can, without destroying it. And hopefully you can still see this while I'm doing it. I'm just going to remove the Acura scale hook. That came out pretty easily. Same on the other side. Ah, Henry. There we are. Very good. And what we can do is later on we'll drill out the mounting hole a little bit with the pin vise, just so it's a little bit easier to work with. There we are. Pin vise was the best thing I ever bought. Made working on my local so much easier. There we are. Okay, we'll do the same with that side. Get it in yonder. Now again, if you can't see 100%, I do apologise. I am trying to do this worth looking through a camera lens and also make sure that I get it right and get it straight get it in there <sighs> okay lovely that'll do so let's investigate if I can the removed couplers so we've got those there and that's already lost Part of it thinks that's not really good. Let's have a look at this one. There we go. That one actually is still serviceable. So we'll try and get the hook off and get this bar into this little article here. Oh, lovely, I've dropped it on the floor. Super. Fear not, before. For great luck and fortune has befallen me. And I have actually got a plethora of these. I mean, as it happens, they are really beautiful hooks. And if you've got the curvature for it, you could actually just use these. Problem I found is on tighter curves, there just isn't the flex in the chain work there to allow it to go smoothly. But it's okay because for the most part, the lower section is just going to be for the display and for looks and I'm just snipping away the insides 
So you can see now I'm left with hopefully the camera will focus, focus your little bleeder. Just left with the two little splines there. So that can now be hooked into the three link coupling and made to stay put with a little bit of glue. And this is, of course, going to be one of those moments when you need 17 pairs of hands and a microscope and everything else. I think after a little dry run, I've just about got it to a point that actually works. So, first things first. A little bit of glue on the hole in the three link. That's it. And then just try and get these in the right place if you can. This is fiddly beyond belief. Almost had it on as well. There we are. Make sure you don't glue yourself to it. But once you've got it in place like that, just put a tad more glue. Just hold it in place. Just a little bit. And then hopefully straighten that bar out the bottom there. Let that dry. Hopefully you've not glued your fingers together. We'll try the same with the other one and then we'll get to the fun part which is mounting them inside the loco. Right, that's the fiddly bit done. I've got two of them fitted now. And as I said, I don't normally do it this way with wagons but occasionally with locos I find myself doing it just because I want the extra detail. So the next question is, how do you get this into here? without it being completely destroyed and then it's a very simple pen fold you take the BFCs gently cut them about halfway down leaving you with what can only be described as a stump and then, with your other remaining 17 pairs of hands, hold it thus, and we're going to try and cut the end into a little blade shape, to a fine point. This is all nice and fiddly as well, so it's really relaxing. I can't see it. That's what I'll be hearing at comments. I can't see it. There you go. There we are. Okay. So we've got this little blade end point thing. There we are. All I'm going to do is just locate the central hole. Best one can. Just push it home. Doesn't need to be nice overly secure for the time being because that's what second part's for. Okay, so we're almost in there now. Just a bit more fiddling. In fact, I might need to make that hole bigger, actually. Make that hole a bit bigger. There we go. That's a proper hole now. If I'm honest with you, that's probably a bit too steep of a blade edge, but it'll it'll still work. Add it in there. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can just leave it in and put a double super glue to hold it, or you can do what I do, which is get the old soldering hang out. Let's have a look at this. Okay, it's soldering hang out. This is the DCC Concepts one that I got a few weeks back. It's been 
really handy little tool. And I'm going to set that on the hottest setting, which is 480. I'm going to let it get up to temperature, and essentially, once it is up to temperature, very carefully, just push that hook home, and the heat will melt the plastic, hopefully, and bed the hook in. Well, let's hope it works. Okay, we're almost up to temperature now. Here we are. And again, you need to be very careful that you don't burn. Hopefully, this camera's focusing or melt anything on the locomotive. Shouldn't take too long for the heat to transfer. There we are. Lovely. And as you can see, the heart. That's now in there. Lovely. We've got a little hook in there. And that is looking pretty good, actually. Yeah, we like that. This buffer was already damaged before I got to it. Uh, I need to replace it. But I'm happy with that. That was pretty good. So we'll do it to the other side. And we'll call it a job done, then we'll give it a chest run, shall we? Okay, so as usual, that worked out pretty well. Here's the finished product here now. Got a nice hook on there. And it's in there strong enough to pull a full turn on that side as well. A bit wonky on that side. That's because I am a fiddly individual. Anyway, let's get this bad boy off the track, see if it actually works. Now this loco is set to 17 or 1. Not sound fitted yet. Hoping to do that soon. There we are. Let's get the lights on. Okay, now it's not got a stale light fixed either. So it will be prone to slight power outages. Let's get it going. Okay, let's get in a bit closer and see the coupling action, shall we? Okay, pop me up. Let's just get this loco a bit closer up. There we are. Coupling tool. Hook it up. So as you can see, it's pretty straightforward and actually it's not that hard to use three link couplings provided you've got the right type of layout for it. Obviously if you've got a huge expanse of a layout that's really deep and you can't physically reach over to a couple of your locomotives and you want to do shunting then you're going to have to look at a remote option like KDs or the uh, Alan Rickman. <laughs> Is it Alan Rickman couplings? There's a few different ones out there with like, a little thin bar of paper clip and magnets in the track and all, all of this nonsense. Anyway, as you've seen, it's not too difficult at all to install it, retrofit it, and it looks a lot better than the big garish D-rings you get and the tension lock couplings and everything else. So for me, I'm finally happy. I've got a solution that works for me. Other thing you need to be aware of is that if you're going around fairly tight curves and bends, you might need to put f uh, four chain links in just so your locals and wagons have got enough room to turn without getting buffer clash or buffer lock. And it's the same when you're propelling them. Once they've buffered up, you want to make sure there's nothing in the way of the wagons and you want to make sure that they're not too tight. Believe it or not, this is where sprung buffers actually come in. So for me, sprung buffers actually do perform a task and a purpose. So a lot of my stock doesn't have sprung buffers, so that's something that's going to have to be retrofitted again later on. But with the right tools, it's easy enough to do. So, 
That said folks, let's have a look at the layout updates this week and see what's coming. Oh, and if you're enjoying this, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. We're less than 50 subscribers away now from 1,000, so let's get that number folks. So here we are, this is the, the quote unquote main layout, the big layout. Hasn't really got a name, never really had the name. I just had to scratch the itch of having a layout which expanded across my entire living room, as you can see. It takes up quite a lot of space and what have you. And it is an enjoyable thing to have, but it's not without its issues. For example, as we well know, behind this section here is a bit of rail and it's very difficult to get to that if something derails or if you need to clean the track. So it's not incredibly practical. Also, I can't get to the window. The window needs some repairs and things and I can't get to the window. So that is also a downside. And we have similar problems over here. Those of you who've been watching long, long enough will remember me sticking my head up from behind that very wall, showing you how little space there actually is. So it is time now to, I think, say goodbye to this layout, especially in its current um, form. And we are going to make use of the alcove behind the layout on this wall section here. I won't tell you just yet what's planned, but I will say this, it will not be a roundy roundy, it will be an end to end. The heritage layout is still staying. The Steve Thomas line will be staying. That'll be raised up though, on these legs, which are coming off of the bottom. You see the leg there in the corner. I'll be recycling those legs and raising it up so it's easier to operate from a standpoint and hopefully one day as an exhibition that is the end goal for this lot, this layout. Get it to an exhibition. Okay, so. That being said, if there's anything on here, guys, that you want in terms of trackage, we've got code 100 points all over. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 code 100 points. Some are streamlined, some are the regular Pico ones, all of them are code 100. So if you want those, give me a shout, we'll work something out. Um, I'm up for trades or, or whatever, because all the new layouts will be code 75 bullhead track. So, that's it. Bye bye layout. We're going to work on dismantling it in the coming days and weeks. I will save what I can, buildings, etc, etc. Um, all these wonderful bits, 3D printed bits from Rusty Rails modelling, they're going to be used more to their, to their uh, intended purpose rather than just sat in the sidings there. Those wonderful buffer stops, the Rio buffer stops from um, Acura Scale, they will be used again. I'm reusing these tankers because I love the weather and job of the dumbbells. All the little people and things as well. Whatever track I can salvage, I will do. But it's going to be a, a case of, for lack of a better term, sucking it and seeing. Right then. We're going to start taking this apart this week. Then we'll have more updates on that later on. So that's it for this week's video, guys. Bit of a short one, but I've been working six days this week, so I've not really had any time. And this room has horrible lighting at night time, so I need to film when I've got usable daylight. And it's pretty dull outside at the minute anyway, so... I'm working with the best I have. Hopefully in coming weeks we'll have some more topics, some exciting reviews. I know the Palm Bricks from KL Models are en route. I've got three of them coming, so that'll be a nice little video. We'll look at weathering them as well. And we're also going to weather the little class... Is it a class 5 I've got? The Helgen Hunslet I've got down there, the diesel shunter. That'll be weathered up soon too. So lots coming in terms of weathering content, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share the video, share the love. There will hopefully be a live stream this Sunday as well. It'll be an attempt at the one that went wrong last Sunday. If you tuned in, thank you very much. Sorry it didn't go up on. A little bit of my fault as well as things just going wrong in general and not fully understanding how the streaming format worked with my phone and my camera. But it's all been put to bed now. I should be sorted. So until then, folks, take care of yourselves. I'll see you very soon. Cheers now. Bye-bye.